Ramesh Fernandes, lecturer at Department of BSc in Interior Design and Decoration, Milagris College, Mango. So today I am here uh, with a lecture uh, of about uh, what is uh, foundation, uh, why this foundation has been uh, provided, what, uh, why there are different types of foundation, different types of uh, footing and uh, uh, we'll check about uh, different uh, types of uh, foundation which is uh, involved in the topic. So first thing uh, we have to know what is foundation. So as you can uh, uh, see here in the slide, it is given that uh, it is defined as a part of the structure that transfers the load from the structure constructed on it as well as it is weighed over a large area of the soil in such a way that the amount does not exceed the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil and the settlement of the whole structure remains within the tolerate limit. So in simple words, uh, if you are talking about foundation, uh, we can uh, easily uh, describe it as uh, uh, the enlargement of the base uh, of the column or the wall which is uh, uh, done, uh, which uh, transmits the load to the subsoil. So which is done below the ground, not above the ground. The construction, in sim uh, very uh, again uh, if you have to take it a very simple way, uh, we can even uh, describe it uh, as a construction which is uh, done under the ground level. So that is uh, what we call as the foundation. So it is uh, one of the most essential part of any kind of structure. So upon the so if you talk about residential uh, structures, uh, the structures uh, uh, having uh, five stories, uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, spaces, or uh, any uh, individual uh, uh, spaces also. So any of these uh, structure should have a proper foundation to it. So only then uh, it will uh, have a, a very good strength in uh, when you when the lifespan uh, it will increase even the lifespan of the uh, building as well the whatever you have constructed. So foundation is one of the most essential part of the structure. So foundation is a part of structure on which the building stands. The soil, the ground on which it rests is known as the foundation bed so you can even define it as uh, the enlargement of the column the enlargement of the base of the columns and the walls uh, which transmits the other loads on it okay so whatever uh, the uh, foundation uh, you construct it will uh, carry some other load on it Okay, so that is uh, you can define it in such a way. So uh, next uh, coming to the topic why a foundation is provided. So why should uh, we, uh, why this uh, foundation is provided. So distribute the weight of structure over a large area of soil. Okay, so this is one of the reason uh, why the foundation is provided. So when you construct a very heavily equipped uh, building, so to distribute the weight, the distribute uh, uh, the weight of the uh, structure over a large area of the soil. So by, uh, foundation uh, will. Uh, foundation is provided to distribute the weight of the structure and even to avoid the unequal settlement also. So sometimes uh, uh, with, uh, uh, without the foundation, the, if a house is uh, constructed, if a house or anything, uh, you can't construct uh, uh, three to four uh, stories uh, uh, building uh, as well uh, without the foundation. But uh, in case if you construct a small uh, uh, house, if you construct a house uh, which is having two to three stories uh, and uh, without the foundation, so that will uh, lead on to the uh, settlement uh, which is uh, more so when it uh, when you uh, apply uh, when you uh, do a foundation when you provide a foundation uh, to the any of the structure the structure also becomes uh, uh, strong and even the settlement of uh, the structure will also be in a minor part so next uh, uh, prevent to prevent the lateral movement of the structure 
and uh, increase the structural stability so uh, we can uh, connect these uh, two points so if you uh, uh, taught, if you take an example of uh, uh, electric uh, pole so before uh, it has been uh, uh, placed on a certain place the soil is been uh, excavated from that uh, particular place and then the electric pole is been fixed onto it so so that it doesn't have any movement and uh, it will be stable on that place so if it is uh, to avoid the horizontal movement of the structure uh, we uh, provide the foundation as well so this is uh, why the foundation is being provided so next we have uh, 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 we have there are different types of uh, footings so there are so why why there are different uh, types of uh, footing so there are different types of soil and the bearing capacity of the soil for each type of soil is different so it will have a different uh, uh, size uh, uh, some of in some of the areas uh, you might uh, find the upper soil is uh, uh, very uh, strong uh, so that you can uh, have a uh, footing which is uh, nearer to your ground level in some of the cases uh, uh, you might have uh, the upper soil which is very uh, weak so that uh, you will have to provide uh, uh, deep uh, foundation or the deep footing uh, so there are uh, different types of soils uh, and the bearing capacity of the soil is different for each type of soil so depending upon the profile the size and the load of the structure the engineers choose different kinds of foundation so this is uh, so uh, once uh, the engineers uh, come to the site and examine the uh, soil there so uh, they'll get to know uh, they'll have the idea of uh, what kind of uh, soil it is so uh, is uh, can we have the so uh, can we have a shallow uh, foundation or can we uh, we should uh, go in deep uh, so all that uh, would be uh, chosen by the engineers and then uh, any construction uh, will be taken uh, forward so this is uh, the reason uh, we have different types of footing so uh, for the different types of soil so be, uh, which is according to the particular area it might define uh, uh, different uh, it, you can uh, see the difference in uh, some particular uh, uh, part of the areas as well so next uh, coming to the uh, types of uh, foundation so uh, if you talk uh, talk about uh, foundation uh, mainly there are uh, two types of uh, foundation one is uh, the shallow foundation and one more that is deep foundation so shallow foundation is uh, nothing but uh, uh, which is uh, constructed uh, just uh, uh, with the shallow depth uh, of the ground so the width will be more than the depth in your shallow foundation so when it comes to the deep foundation the depth will be more than your width so that is uh, one of the different uh, difference between the shallow foundation and the deep foundation so when you uh, talk about a uh, shallow foundation also shallow foundation is been uh, uh, further uh, divided into five uh, categories uh, five footings so shallow foundation is been again further subdivided into five footings so those are the isolated spread, spread footing the wall footing the combined footing the cantilever or the strap footing the raft or the mat footing or the mat foundation we call it as so next uh, uh, in your deep foundation so it has been uh, divided into subdivided into three types of uh, uh, fo uh, footing or the foundation that is pile foundation pyre foundation and the cashin foundation so now let us discuss uh, uh, about so if you uh, let us discuss in detail about the uh, shallow foundation so shallow foundation a shallow foundation is a type of building foundation that transfers structural load to the earth very nearer to the surface than to a subsurface layer or a range of depth as does a deep foundation so here what happens uh, so the shallow foundation is a type of building foundation which transfers the structural load very nearer to the earth as i have said to you all uh, said you uh, while explaining so this uh, shallow uh, foundation uh, which will be uh, uh, done at uh, 
very nearer to the ground level and the width is more width will be more than the depth here so shallow foundation transfers the load to a stratum present in the shallow depth so as the shallow foundation depth is low and it is economical it is most popular type of foundation for lightweight structure so why can you how can you tell it as uh, uh, the, this uh, shallow foundation is uh, more economical so since uh, when you're talking about uh, deep foundation uh, you'll have to uh, uh, you have to spend more on the uh, construction work you have to dig uh, you have to excavate uh, uh, the ground uh, very deeply and then you have to construct a foundation so here when you come to the shallow foundation all those uh, cost would be reduced in uh, such type of foundation so uh, it is the most uh, popular type of foundation for the lightweight structures so when you have uh, uh, very uh, uh, huge structures uh, to be a very uh, maybe a commercial uh, or the flats uh, uh, residential buildings uh, so uh, maybe a hospital uh, so something like that uh, if you are going to build very uh, taller so uh, it is uh, better uh, we uh, it is better that the foundation go still deeper so that is uh, about the foundation so uh, shallow foundation it has been uh, divided into further uh, five uh, uh, sub footings or the su five sub uh, foundation you can tell it as so in that the first one isolated spread footing so if you look at the picture itself uh, you can understand how the uh, foundation uh, might uh, take place so this is most widely recognized and most straightforward shallow foundation type so it is uh, also uh, it can be a rectangular in shape it can be a trapezoidal in shape so uh, it is a single so isolated spread footing so what do you mean by isolated so uh, most of, uh, right now most of them uh, uh, might be knowing about uh, uh, what is isolation so we have uh, faced uh, many of the issues uh, uh, past uh, about the uh, corona so that uh, we have to uh, get isolated uh, if we are tested positive so something like that so which means uh, it is a s individual uh, which is supporting so this is one of the most widely recognized and the most straightforward shallow foundation so it is a individual type of foundation so they are typically utilized for shallow establishment to convey and spread the concentrated burdens for instance so maybe like uh, pillars or the columns so they are uh, generally used uh, for the ordinary buildings which is up to five stories okay so in uh, your isolated uh, footing or the spread footing you can uh, even call it as a spread footing also so there are uh, even uh, following uh, types uh, in this so isolated which means uh, individual footing so uh, if you have a uh, 10 pillars or uh, 10 uh, uh, walls are to be constructed uh, so that means the 10 separate uh, footings will be provided for the each one of the pillars so in that uh, you have the single pad footing the stepped footing and the sloped footing so if you look at the figure uh, a that is a pad footing so even uh, you can even call it as a rectangular uh, footing also since the uh, base of the uh, footing uh, will be the rectangular in uh, shape uh, maybe sometimes uh, it is uh, uh, trapezoidal also so but uh, pad footing is uh, uh, almost uh, 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 compared to the uh, rectangular footing and the next one we have the stepped footing the same uh, uh, type of uh, footing it is it is also one of the uh, one of the spread uh, isolated uh, footing but uh, one more step is been provided and the concrete is been uh, placed on the uh, footing so that uh, it will carry uh, more uh, it will give more uh, strength to the pillar so if you have to uh, carry more uh, load on such uh, such a wall so that uh, in that case you can have a, 
uh, stepped footing also next you have the uh, sloped footing so this is also uh, this can be also called as a trapezoidal uh, uh, footing uh, also so when you uh, when the space is very less and uh, you need uh, uh, more uh, you you need to have a more uh, strength for your pillar so that uh, heavy loads can be equipped uh, on it so in that case you can go deeper and have a, a sloped footing as well in same particular uh, uh, space uh, you can uh, call it as a 5 by 5 or 4 by 4 footing if you are doing it so that is what uh, about the isolated footing so isolated uh, which means the individual footing so in that uh, there are the three types that is a single pad footing stepped footing and the sloped footing so to decide when to use shallow foundation it is necessary to know when it is economical so it is economical when the load of the structure is relatively low so columns are not closely placed so the bearing capacity of the soil is high at shallow depth okay so in these uh, uh, cases you can uh, decide to have a shallow foundation of uh, which is uh, economical to you so next uh, one we have the wall footing so wall footing so it can also be called as a strip footing so wall footing uh, so this is having a, a more uh, name uh, you can uh, uh, say uh, wall footing is also known as continuous footing so these uh, wall footing strip footing uh, continuous footing so you can uh, uh, all these uh, three can be the same one so this type of uh, this type is used to distribute loads of structural or non structural load bearing walls to the ground in such a way that the load bearing limit of the soil isn't outperformed so it runs along the direction of the wall so here if you look at the picture uh, which is given so uh, the continuous uh, uh, wall footing uh, has been provided and above that the uh, wall which has been uh, constructed uh, that uh, that is of a concrete wall which is constructed so the width of the wall foundation so width of the wall foundation is usually three two to three times the width of the wall so uh, width of the foundation width of the wall foundation width of the wall foundation is usually 2 to 3 times bigger than the wall okay so here uh, if you look at the picture you can uh, understand uh, more about uh, this uh, wall footing so wall footing can also be called as strip footing and continuous footing so where the uh, uh, wall which is constructed uh, by the concrete is uh, uh, provided along with the uh, footing so since so it is called as a wall footing so next uh, we have the combined footing So combined footing, so if you look at the picture, uh, there is nothing uh, much uh, difference uh, between the isolated uh, spread footing and the combined footing. So here what happened, uh, what happens is uh, the both the pillars, now we, uh, you can uh, look at the picture, there are two, uh, two of the pillars. So both the pillars is being uh, provided and it is attached along, attached to a single footing. So that is the only difference in uh, isolated spread footing each pillars uh, uh, had a separate uh, footing in combined footing uh, either uh, two or more pillars will be joined together I mean uh, joined together uh, with the help of the footing so that is called the combined footing. So when the columns of the structure are carefully placed or bearing capacity of the soil is low and their footing overlap each other so sometimes uh, uh, maybe the bearing capacity of the soil uh, uh, may be very uh, weak uh, so that it can uh, it uh, it is not uh, possible for the uh, footing uh, uh, foundation uh, to uh, carry such loads in that case you can have a combined uh, footing or uh, uh, sometimes uh, the uh, you you will not get a 
proper area which is uh, level so in that case uh, you have to overlap the footing each other so in that case also this combined footing can be provided so combined footing is provided it is fundamentally a blend of different footing so which uses the properties of various balances in a single footing dependent on the necessity of the structure okay so this is uh, nothing but it is uh, similar to the isolated uh, type of uh, footing but here two or more uh, 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 pillars or uh, beam uh, pillars we call it as it has been joined with the single footing so that is called the combined footing so foundation which are made up uh, made common to more than one column are called combined footing so there are different types of combined footings including the slab type the beam type the rectangular raft and the strap beam so they may be square the t shaped or uh, trapezoidal also so the main objective is the uniform distribution of the loads under the entire area of the footing so for this is necessary to coincide with the center of gravity of the footing area so with the center of the gravity of the total loads okay so this is uh, about the combined footing so next uh, we have the strap footing so strap footing are similar to the combined footing so reason for considering or choosing strap footing are identical to the combined one so in strap footing the foundation under the column is built individually and connected by a strap beam so if you look at the picture here in my next uh, slide so there is uh, two pillars so two columns uh, vertical members is been uh, placed uh, with the column footing so the column footing and the column is been placed and the both the pillars both the columns both the column footing is been joined together with the help of a separate strap so separate beam so that is called the strap beam which connects both the columns so both the vertical members both the column footings will be connected to each other so sometimes either uh, one uh, one may be uh, the smaller in size one may one might be the bigger in size so but uh, the strap will be connected uh, which is uh, in the center of both the columns so generally when the edge of the footing cannot be extended beyond the property line so the exterior footing is connected by a strap beam with the interior footing so here if you look at the uh, figure uh, first uh, the second one first uh, second one where uh, uh, edge, uh, adjoining uh, wall is been placed so maybe uh, that uh, beside that the property is uh, which belongs to someone else so you can't uh, provide the uh, footing uh, which uh, which will cross the border which will cross that adjoining wall so in that case to get uh, to gain the strength of uh, strength to the uh, column you have you can connect uh, the strap beam from uh, one of the uh, footings to the uh, column which is uh, very nearer to the adjoining wall so for that case you can have the strap footing so the last one uh, in your shallow foundation uh, that is raft or the mat foundation so raft or the mat foundation are used where other shallow or the pile foundation are not suitable so where the pile and the pile foundation are not suitable in that case the mat foundation will be used so you can uh, if you look at the picture here so one mat is provided so how this uh, uh, in simple words uh, if you uh, if i have to explain this this type of uh, uh, foundation will be provided for the heavy uh, structure so when you have uh, to 
gain more loads uh, or uh, maybe that uh, particular uh, area which you uh, choose uh, maybe it is subjected to some earthquake so in that case you'll have to excavate or uh, excavate the ground and uh, take the soil and then provide a mat foundation along with the uh, columns so that is uh, this type of footation so it is also recommended in the situation where the bearing capacity of the soil is inadequate so the load of the structure is to be distributed over a large area or structure subjected continuously to shocks or jerks so as i have already uh, said you all so raft foundation consists of a reinforced concrete slab or t beam slab placed over the entire area of the structure so under the entire area of the structure a mat will be provided a concrete mat will be provided so in this type uh, the whole basement floor slab acts as a foundation so the total load of the structure is spread evenly over the entire area of the structure so this is uh, called the raft so because in case the building seems like a vessel that floats on the sea of soil okay so if you look at the picture here so uh, it looks like uh, uh, a slab which we provide under so not uh, above the uh, above uh, your residential uh, where, where you talk it as uh, the slab will be given above the uh, above uh, 10 feet uh, 9 feet 6 inches uh, or uh, 10 feet uh, at uh, 10 feet height so this is uh, one of the slab which is provided under the construction under the uh, structure so which is connected to all the columns so today uh, we have uh, discussed uh, about uh, the foundation and uh, why there are uh, different types of uh, foundation and why the foundation is being uh, provided and the uh, about the shallow foundation and the uh, other uh, uh, types uh, which is uh, which comes under the shallow foundation so thank you